I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media. And today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Doug Leonard, the CEO of HiFi Finance. Doug, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Ashton. You're very welcome. Excited to dive into your insights into the DeFi industry uh, and lending solutions. I feel like we're on the cusp of something huge after all the issues with centralized exchanges and people are realizing the potential that DeFi has and where it's going. Um, I would love to kick off our conversation by just hearing a little bit on your background in, in blockchain and, and how that led you to starting HiFi, and then we'll dive into all the details. For sure. So I got into blockchain around 2012, so I've been around for a little bit in the industry, and then eventually wanted to work in blockchain as an engineer. And so I've worked myself from you know the engineering side and now on the business side, and so I kind of take a uh, a perspective from from both ends, and uh, I really run my organization uh, as sort of an experimentation hub where we're constantly experimenting, working to push the boundaries of what's possible. And I think you'll see that as uh, we talk about you know some of the various aspects of HiFi. HiFi didn't start out as a lending protocol; it was a communications platform. And we had you know looked around the industry; we weren't seeing the traction that we'd hoped for. We initially launched as mainframe in 2017, and uh, today we've pivoted into HiFi. We're a fixed rate lending protocol, and we're really focused on giving people tools of predictability around their mm -hmm. you know, decentralized finance. Incredible, and uh, I think pivots are, are smart, and it's great to have that, uh, that understanding uh, on the coding side and the business side. I feel like that's especially important uh, as a startup uh, to, to understand, you know, it, it's hard when you don't understand the coding and you're, you're, you're not an engineer to <laughs> just trust the ones around you that they're doing it all right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, that's so true. it's great to hear. Um, and now that you've pivoted and, and are having success as, as a lending solution, can you talk about where HiFi Finance sort of fits as a, uh, in the blockchain space as a lending solution compared to some of the major DeFi lending platforms that we see today? <clears throat> Yeah, so there's two types of uh, lending platforms really out there. There's like the, the stablecoin oriented one. So like MakerDAO is a debt protocol. And then you've got the Aave and Compound, which are kind of like debt marketplaces. We are more in this camp over here with Aave and Compound. And our key differentiator is that we have, um, you know, fixed rate uh, interest uh, payments for both lenders and borrowers. So when you go in to use our protocol, you know exactly what you're going to earn as a lender mm -hmm. and you know exactly what you're going to pay as a borrower. Mm -hmm. so that, that's the key differentiator and it gives people a lot more predictability because they can lock in that rate. You know, Look at the mm -hmm. macro and look how whenever interest rates start going up, it starts to really change the financials for people. So this, this gives people that predictability. Mm -hmm. No, that's definitely something that's uh, you know, harder to come by in, in cryptocurrency where you know, assets are volatile and you, it's hard to expect the, the price movements. So to at least have one variable fixed is, uh, is comforting. Uh, and with the major assets, are you focused on you know, stable coins as well, as you mentioned, as, and Bitcoin and Ethereum, sort of the major lending assets, or to what extent do you go to on which assets can be lent and borrowed? So our, our key consideration here is what makes good collateral. Now we've already seen with you know Aave and Compound MakerDAO, they you know really do a good job of like really dialing in you know what has sufficient liquidity on chain. You know how are liquidations going to work? You know what is the proper like buffers to make sure that you know if there are cascading liquidations that we still are able to avoid you know bad debt on our protocol for the most part. And so, you know, those all, you know, kind of meet this threshold of sufficient, um, you know, properties of collateral for uh, a system like ours. And, but for us, you know, we're, we're not, um, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to compete against, you know, these giants on just those terms. And so we're really trying to push the boundaries of what can be considered mm -hmm. um, collateral on chain. And so, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of experimentation happening there. And us really trying to push our way into kind of the real world asset onboarding. You see uh, MakerDAO, you know, pushing in with you know bonds that are you know held by a central entity. Um, you know, we want to get into that space because we think that's the future, and we think it's the biggest opportunity that 
is in front of blockchain right now is this onboarding of real world assets on chain to take mm -hmm. advantage of these new financial primitives uh, have you know kind of the transparency which we've seen highlighted in the broader you know market the, the advantages of that you know, you know exactly when somebody is insolvent you know exactly if somebody's lying uh, it, it's very difficult to uh, explain mm -hmm. away the discrepancies between you know public statements and on-chain data so uh, you know we, we really hope to position ourselves as a real trailblazer on the real world asset front as we you know head into the next couple of years mm -hmm, definitely and the beautiful thing about <laughs> the, these uh, lending protocols is you know, there's people can get in with smaller amounts and people can get in with large amounts as well what is what have you seen so far you know through hi-fi in terms of you know little fish coming in and big whales is it open for anybody to have certain limits on on how much they want to borrow Yes, yeah, so the protocol itself will uh, create kind of uh, these credit limits for certain markets. And so it, it's up to, you know, MFT and the HiFi token holders to vote and set those limits. And we just kind of follow, you know, very standard, um, you know, it, it's quite boring right now because we're not really pushing the limits yet. Uh, we're, we're testing the system, making sure it works. And, um, but it's, you know, these internal variables where we can set limits to prevent any you know, uh, nonsensical type behavior that's irrational mm -hmm. from occurring and just get in front of it with, you know, you can only borrow, you know, X amount against, uh, you know, your collateral at a, at a given mm -hmm. time. For sure. Yeah. And I've, I've seen, you know, throughout this year, people that it, they don't understand fully, you know, lending, borrowing from a volatile asset and all of a sudden there's a flash crash and, and, and liquidations happen. So good to have, you know, keep it safe and, and make sure that you're diversified in your holdings and not borrowing more than you can afford to lose or, you know, a risky amount, obviously. Yeah, and I think whenever you go in with a large position in any sort of device protocol, you are creating an incentive equal to your collateral. If they can move the price by a marginal amount to hit that liquidation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if they can manipulate the market that much, you are creating an incentive there. So it is something to be aware and cautious of. But uh, usually it's easy to avoid by just not leveraging yourself up, you know, multiple times by, you know, borrowing, depositing, borrowing, depositing. If you, you know, keep yourself to, you know, just a standard amount of exposure, you're usually, you know, going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Well said, Doug. And I was looking through, you know, HiFi's announcement and I saw that today uh, you're launching a, a new edition called Crown Ribbon. Um, can you talk about, you know, what is the Crown Ribbon launch and, and how does that tie into the future of HiFi? Yeah, thank you so much. So when we went looking for new experiments that we could run that would meet like a certain set of criteria we ended up landing on crown ribbon so first i'll tell you what crown ribbon is crown ribbon is the platform and that is going to use uh digital assets on chain to tokenize the horse industry so we're, we're going after the high-end performance horse industry you know, think thoroughbreds think quarter horse racing and this is a phenomenal asset class and it's an antiquated industry that's just ripe for disruption and so we're trying to take this old antiquated industry and bring them right into you know 2022 and offer them the chance of you know having a worldwide audience you know deep liquidity across blockchain uh making it instant finality and being able to transfer their assets and allow them to offer to their audience skin in the game such that, you know, whenever one of these horses goes and races or competes, that, you know, you can own a slice of that horse. Now, what's, wow. what's really interesting about this industry is they've been fractionalizing horse ownership for, you know, many, many decades. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I don't even know exactly how long they've been doing it. It's just everybody understands that concept. And so mm -hmm. the, you know, fractionalization that we can offer with blockchain fits really nicely into the paradigm that they've already been operating on. And it just brings all these benefits of, 
easily transferring ownership, changing your exposure, being able to hedge out of you know exposure if you're overexposed, and uh, you know basically trailblazing new markets is what we're doing. So uh, the, the the whole profile here is super fascinating. So I'll, I'll talk for a second just about kind of the asset life cycle, and then I wanted to get mm -hmm. into a couple little interesting tidbits that I've learned. Because uh, I'm sure I, I grew up in Texas, but I'm 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 not a cowboy myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm trying to learn as much as I can. But when you look at <clears throat> these assets, these assets have certain outputs that are cash flowing, and and it's their their reproductive outputs. So you can cryogenically freeze horse semen. You can wash the eggs and embryos out of the mares, and then you can freeze them. And so, in a way, you know, we are tokenizing access to that cash flow through syndication. So, uh, you know, as you know, you get a horse that is winning on the upper ends of these uh, competitions. There are many others who want to come after you and breed with you. You can charge a stud fee. Mm -hmm. And so your your horse ends up, uh, you know, how to how to put it, you know, essentially you're going to capture these reproductive outputs and, and put them in the freezer for breeding season, and then you're you're able to just you know turn your horse into a cash cow if you will. So wow. these the, the, this whole life cycle is fascinating because even if your horse dies, uh, you you have all these outputs that are still you know reasonably valuable. Mm -hmm. And so there, there is somewhat of this built in, you know, micro economy within the industry that creates some really interesting behaviors that those who take the time to learn, uh, I think, you know, like myself, will become very intrigued by. Now, these horses, they've got life insurance policies. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely wild. I, I never, never thought that, that I would uh, be purchasing life insurance on a horse one day, but here I am. And so, What's nice about this is these assets, because they're cash flowing, they're a much better profile for collateral mm. than maybe your digital picture of a monkey or maybe your digital picture, you know, these digital collectibles that, you know, potentially you don't, don't really have a clear vision because either teams haven't released it or you're not quite sure what the financials are behind the team. But, but what we're trying to do at HiFi and partnering up with Crown Ribbon is we needed an entity that would actually file with the SEC and mm -hmm. create a regulated offering to then tokenize and put on chain that then HiFi can come over and consume. The, the, the profile of you know, your typical cowgirl or cowboy who's uh, you know, barrel racing, for example, mm -hmm. their horse is often the most valuable asset that mm -hmm. they own. More valuable than their car, more valuable mm -hmm. than their home that they live in. And wow. it, they can't they can't tap into that value mm -hmm. as a uh, you know as as they compete, and so you know tokenizing ownership of this and adding it to a lending platform like HiFi can allow cowboys and cowgirls to you know access that value, which the traditional financial system lacks the expertise to underwrite, and so this is you know kind of the exciting part for us is. We wanted to find an industry that we could actually disrupt. You know, mm -hmm. everybody talks about blockchain is going to disrupt all these different industries, and we wanted to actually go out and prove that it could happen. And so we, we've partnered up with Chad Buse, and who is the owner of uh, or co-owner of one of the largest um, barrel racing events in the world. Mm -hmm. They give away more money to cowboys and cowgirls than any other organization in the world right now and so we've got it you know we've partnered up with the right talent and uh we're really excited to bring this new paradigm of ownership to you know the high-end horse racing industry that is just a massive massive uh market that that we're you know really working to disrupt wow that sounds incredible doug and and you know, I don't know too much about horse racing, but from what I understand, the horses are very expensive, <laughs> and there's big money that that's on horse racing, and it's yes. actually a huge industry. Um, and you know, sometimes those ones you didn't think, you know, cowboys would be using blockchain, and and hopefully they don't have to get too much into the weeds of you know what is blockchain and all of this stuff. They can just take their assets and and deal with companies like you guys uh, to 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 get it done for them, so that they can, yeah, like 
get value out of their assets, you know, while they're still useful. Um, right. With partnering with these large companies, how uh, the horse market is a, a huge market. So, like, just yeah. even just tapping into a, a small portion of this, you think it's going to make a you know a, a wave, a, a ripple effect into hopefully you know moving into like how quickly do you think this would expand? Well, they call it a game, the game of kings for a reason. And, and the reason why is because traditional financial tools won't allow you know, ordinary people to come in and have mm -hmm. the scale that they need in order to run an efficient you know, breeding and racing operation. Mm -hmm. And so you've got these billionaires who kind of you know, you know, go make money because they you know, own ocean spray or their family does, and then they come in and, and this is kind of where they play. And, uh, you know, the, to, to run an effective operation, you have to have that scale. And so um, we really hope that we'll be able to put resources in the hands of those with the skills to, to actually, you know, help the industry blossom and grow. You know, we, we've seen uh, through, you know, Chad and the Pink Buckle, you know, his organization has grown 100% year over year for the last five years. And it's, wow. you know, been this real growth that, that we you know, really want to hitch our wagon onto and, and take part of. And so, you know, the, the part that I think, you know, we're going to be able to tap into is, you know, these, these billionaires who are trying to, you know, basically build a family name for themselves and, you know, comes down to a little bit of appealing to kind of the ego there is they can now give skin in the game and help build that name for their operation and offer it to people and have access to this as a growth tool that you know nobody's ever been able to do before. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that's what's going to really, you know, you get one or two of them that do it and uh, that's when it's going to really catch on as sort of the new way to go about dedicating your horse. And we're, we're changing the rules a bit because uh, the whole space, you know, operates on, you know, kind of some really old, you know, rules that, you know, prevent, mm -hmm. you know, horses and rights to breeding, breeding rights to, you know, passing on to others. And uh, when you onboard onto Crown Ribbon, you know, you, you, there's, there's none of this right of first refusal. It's a much more efficient environment where you could just sell it to whoever the highest bidder is. And in uh, that way, you know, we, we get much more maturity in the marketplace from this tool mm -hmm. set that we're building mm -hmm. on top of. So, yeah, I, I think it can change it in a big way. And it, of course, I'm really hopeful that we'll see that in a real rapid succession. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, that, and that's exactly the purpose behind, you know, High Five partnering with Crown Ribbon and Crown Ribbon launching to kind of, you know, find custody partners for the horses who are actually going to be the managers and then mm -hmm. issuing the token making sure they're compliant and then you know having access to you know the relationship with hi-fi to bring on the best performing assets you know that that make really good collateral hmm. wow great insights doug and speaking of you know rapid succession what is the plan for for Crown Ribbon in the development roadmap leading into 2023? You know, how quickly am I going to be able to buy some horse output on in, through tokenization? This is a this is an excellent question. You know, so I would say the first half of 2023, we will have uh, made our first official regulated offering. So there's a little bit of work there with the lawyers, if violation, you know, uh, filing, you know a reg a with the sec putting them on notice that we're making this offer you know at what price and you know behind the scenes we already know exactly who that partner is we actually already have procured the horses and so we've got uh you know some very special horses that you know we've you know landed into you know uh through our connections that that we'll be offering up as as our first syndication and so uh the, the process has already started and um but i i you know haven't gone through this uh quite yet and so we're, we're kind of you know hoping for the first half of 2023 that mm -hmm. we'll be onboarding them and then uh from there it's a process of working with high fights community to getting them onboarded as a, a collateral type but yeah you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that cool. they're as eager as i am to bring this on board to the platform that definitely sounds very exciting and for people that want to learn more about you know hi-fi and and 
potentially get involved in it before you know Crown Ribbon gets to that point so that they can vote on, on adding it into the collateral. What's the best way for people to learn more about uh, HiFi and also just follow along with the Crown Ribbon updates? You bet. So HiFi.finance is our website and crownribbon.io is the Crown Ribbon website. So those two websites link you to our blogs and all our socials that you know we keep up to date with the latest information and uh, allow you to come join our Discord to jump into our governance forums and to participate and you know help kind of you know ride along in this you know historic moment as we start to onboard you know the world's assets on chain. Sounds great, Doug. Thank you so much for the insights. I will leave those links in the description box below as well to make it easy for the viewers. Uh, all the best with, with launching Crown Ribbon and uh, let's ride away into the sunset. There we go. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Have a great one.